Hi, I'm Dr. Kishika Kurala, MD, Radiology. Today is our third discussion in the series of our core radiology exams. Let's begin. These are CT and MR images of a newborn with history of hepatosplenomegaly, petechi, rash, chorioretinitis, jaundice, and seizures. What could be your best answer? The options are CMV, congenital toxo, congenital syphilis, and congenital herpes. Let's see the findings first. This is non-enhanced contrast, non-enhanced CT of a newborn where we see the broadened sylvian feces, periventricular calcifications, and cerebellar hypoplasia. This is T2-weighted image of the same patient. We see ventricular megaly, periventricular calcification, and simplified gyral pattern overall, that is polymicrogyria. So my best bet here is congenital cytomegaloviral infection. Okay, so uh, see, congenital cytomegaloviral infection is the most common of the torch infections. It is the most common torch infection that is associated with polymicrogyria. The imaging findings, as you can see here, are periventricular calcifications, um, microcephaly, ventricular megaly. Sometimes a cyst may be seen, right? So that's your finding. Next question. Newborn presenting with hepatosplenomegaly, chorioretinitis, growth retardation, brain damage. What is your uh, signs and symptoms of brain damage? What is your diagnosis? The symptoms, are the options are similar as uh, the question, uh, prior question. So the imaging findings in this non-enhanced CT is we see multiple punctate as well as linear calcifications primarily involving the cerebral cortex as well as the subcortical white matter as you can see here uh, we can also appreciate single periventricular calcification in contrasting with the prior cytomegaloviral infection the uh, other CT image uh, in this image we can see multiple scattered calcifications right so multiple cortical best subcortical best calcifications uh, very close to nil periventricular calcifications highly um, suggestive findings of congenital toxo okay so your answer here is congenital toxo um, congenital toxo is the second most common torch infection. It is caused by, we know, toxoplasma gondii, which is, which is acquired by eating uncooked meat. Um, the triad of congenital toxo is hydrocephalus, not uh, that much appreciated in this image, bilateral chorioretinitis and intracranial calcifications. We see random and extensive calcification unlike cytomegaloviral infection where calcifications were seen in periventricular reason. Calcification in toxo has predilection for basal ganglia and high chances of uh, hydrocephalus, therefore. Okay, next question. Newborn with skin rash, cataracts, fever, poor feeding and seizures. What is your diagnosis? Similar findings. Okay. Uh, in the still unweighted image, we see multiple bilateral cortical and basal uh, ganglia foci of a T1 shortening, right, which is suggestive of subacute hemorrhage. When you move more cephalid, you can see that there are ad uh, additional areas of T1 shortening. Uh, and in the susceptibility weighted MR image, you can uh, always use to differentiate hemorrhage from calcification. The T2-weighted image in the same patient a few months later, we can see extensive encephalomalacic changes, meaning volume loss, right? You can see ribbon-like T2 shortening within the cortex in the areas given uh, provided with arrows. You can also appreciate some cystic areas and cystic lesions. So, 
encephalomalacic changes in late stages with D1 shortening hemorrhage. All are the findings of congenital HSV infection. Congenital HSV can basically have three patterns, skin, eye, and mouth disease with a skin rash or scarring and cataracts, encephalitis and disseminated disease with CNS disease. So in CT, you will see extensive areas of low attenuation involving cortex and subcortical white matter giving because of hemorrhagic infarction in the later stages you may see encephalomalacic changes and high run encephaly on ultrasound your boss word is salt and paper pattern which is um, cerebral edema with leptomeningeal enhancement salt and paper pattern right so that's your finding in cases of um hsv okay newborn with triad of cataracts cardiac anomalies and sensory neural hearing loss what is your diagnosis so this triad is the classic common triad of congenital rubella congenital rubella in congenital rubella, calcification is very less. In fact, calcification is least among all the torch infections. There's microcephaly, right? So you see congenital uh, rubella presenting as subtle subcortical and basal ganglia calcifications. This is congenital rubella also have to depend upon the clinical triad for making diagnosis in this case 25 year old with headache seizures presenting three weeks after the first onset of signs and symptoms in the second row of disease what is your diagnosis here you see there's an enlargement of temporal horns in both images right csf in the uh, sylvian fissures as well as the supracellar cisterns appear a bit dirty and muddy sylvian fissures um, appear quite effaced in fact uh, we also see that uh, the lateral ventricles and third ventricles appear effaced after uh, three weeks of the first presentation in this flare image you can see the basal cisterns and sulci all are hyper intense Progressive hydrocephalus is noted. Now we can also appreciate transependymal edema. Transependymal edema. Right. Post contrast. Uh, uh, post contrast, you can see diffuse, linear, and nodular kind of enhancement. This is a case of pyogenic meningitis and it has led to associated hydrocephalus. Uh, acute meningitis, I would study it for board exams, high yield, high yield. It is infiltration, inflammatory infiltration of meninges and CSF has many varieties, bacterial, viral, tubercular, and fungal. Um, so uh, uh, high yield things to be kept in mind are causes of hyper intense csf on flare can be because of blood that is subarachnoid hemorrhage can be because of meningitis or sometimes because of artifacts like susceptibility artifacts or uh, csf meds csf seeding also less common but equally important uh, causes are high uh, inspired oxygen high fio2 stroke sometimes because of pile collaterals sometimes iv sign seen in moya moya disease uh, we know polycythemia vera can also uh, mimic uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage thing to be kept in mind right Okay, fever, drowsiness, and seizures, patient worsening over the time. What is your diagnosis? It's pretty simple. It is CNS abs, it's cerebral abscess, right? It's abscess, the findings that you can see in this image. Um, 
well-defined lesion with hyperdense rim and a hypodense center, uh, well delineated rim. We can see ring enhancement. It has progressed from late cerebritis to early capsule stage and well-formed stage of abscess surrounded by edema. So this is abscess. Why is it not toxo? Toxos are normally multiple, smaller than abscesses, not the typical site. Abscesses are normally seen in gray-white junction in the frontal and parietal lobes. Multiple abscesses can be seen in immunocompromised patient. Site and location is high yield. In frontal sinusitis, you see abscess in the frontal lobe. In mastoiditis, you see abscesses in temporal lobe or cerebellar reason. There are four pathological stages to abscesses, which are also high yield, early cerebritis, late cerebritis, early capsulated stage, and late capsulated stage. The thing to keep in mind is that abscesses show DWI restriction on diffusion, whereas atypical abscesses like toxo will not diffuse and restrict, right? Toxo is also ring enhancing lesion, but toxo has a typical dot sign with it. And demyelinating plaque uh, has a typical appearance of horseshoe shape or incomplete uh, ring-like enhancement. Cryptococcus is also ring enhancing, seen in, seen in immunocompromised patients. Sometimes you might have to uh, distinguish between abscess and tumor also, because tumoral, uh, tumoral lesions can also sometimes present as, as abscess like glioblastoma, but tumors will have rather irregular and nodular ring. They have shaggy inner lip of ring, whereas abscesses, are tend, uh, abscesses tend to be thicker on the oxygen side or gray matter side of the brain and thinner towards ventricle. Satellite lesions are more common with abscesses and uncommon with tumors, right? And abscesses will show a restriction in the central cavity and not in the periphery. Um, yeah, all that. And uh, in, uh, in fact, in SWI, there's irregular, incomplete, hypo-intense rim. There's no double rim sign on SWI in tumors, whereas there's dual rim sign in SWI. Uh, you can always rely on uh, perfusion where you see high uh, relative cerebral uh, blood volume values in tumor and lower in abscesses. Uh, just a quick reminder that fungal abscesses uh, are also high yield for board exams. Fungal abscesses tend to have intracavitary projections and wall of abscesses and projections uh, demonstrate diffusion restriction, but the abscess core will not uh, demonstrate uh, your restriction. All right, um, that's all for today. Tomorrow we'll come up with more uh, cases and more discussions. That's end of series three. Thank you.